Hello, Floss Tube Stitchers. Welcome back to Just Stitching Ink for video number 27. I'm in front of our big pegboard wall that gets changed for the seasons or when we have trunk shows. And right now it's all set up for the North Coast Tour de Stitch, which is starting next Friday. So we have several trunk shows and some consignment merchandise on display. Most of it is Abbey Rose designs, so they're in that area. And then on the table behind me, which you can't really see right now, and then there's some on the shelves above. And then we have a small display of Romy's Creations and a shelf full of Manny Dadana. As you know, Romy and Simona were just here recently teaching classes, and as they were cleaning up at the end of the day, they decided it made more sense to leave part of their trunk shows with me so they wouldn't have to pack them and ship them back to Italy because they're coming back for Christmas in Williamsburg in December. So all I have to do is pack them up and ship them to their hotel Thanksgiving week, and it's a win-win for both of us. Uh, the other trunk show that we have with models is the Stitching Parlor and we have some lovely seasonal things and monthlies, and also some Jane Austen inspired samplers. So you will see more of those in the coming few weeks. I will be doing a photo montage for next weekend's video because it's the first weekend of the tour, which is always super busy, and we're open later hours. So on Friday and Saturday, we're open till seven, and then on Sunday, we're open from 12 to 5, and we're open on Monday, too, and we're not normally open, so it's going to be a busy weekend, and I felt it was best to have something else as a backup in case I don't have time to do a video of myself yammering on. So I plan to do the photo montage, so you'll get to see uh, more of those models. Uh, here in Northeast Ohio, it's finally starting to feel a little bit like fall. It's in the 60s and 70s instead of the 80s and 90s. So it's that weird time of year when you still have your air conditioning on, but you're wearing socks. Does that make sense? Anyway, I wanted to read you some comments about what other people love about fall, which was my question from two weeks ago. And my favorite response was from Monica Merkley, who's one of our local gals and one of my part-time helpers here at the shop. And she said, pumpkins, the crunch and smell of leaves, the beautiful colors everywhere, the fact that you can wear boots with your jeans again, haunted houses are open, horror is on every channel, and oh yeah, pumpkins. I love boots too. I didn't think about that. I am getting kind of tired of the same old sandals and slip-on shoes I've been wearing for several months, and I'm excited about getting my boots out too, Monica. Uh, a lot of people mention the colors, and here in Ohio, we really do have a beautiful fall with all the rich oranges and rusts and yellows of the leaves, uh, so maybe you have that in your area too. Um, but I wanted to read some other responses uh, more than just about the color. So Vicki Reidelberger says the cool, crisp evenings. And Amy Seneva says fall is almost over for us here in North Pole, Alaska. But my favorite thing about autumn is the cool, crisp air. Check. Yes, we have that here. She says, I love wearing sweaters and hand-knit socks. Then a lot of people had food-related comments. Michelle L. said fall here means apple cider slush. I wonder if she lives someplace warm and that's why she's drinking slushies instead of hot apple cider. That would be interesting to know. Beth Knight says apple cider donuts. Carol Hebert says pumpkin spice creamer in my coffee. Charlotte Miller, hot apple cider. Uh, Chris Bishop, uh, part of her answer said, I love baking pumpkin pie and pumpkin bread and making applesauce and apple butter. So that sounds like a great party to be invited to with all those food-related items we just talked about. 
Then um, G Wiz 65 says, I love the smells of fall, wood smoke, dried leaves and frost. And Kitty T says, um, fall is my favorite time of year. It's hard to choose just one thing, but I love the crunch of dry leaves, acorns and seed pods underfoot. That was so poetic, those last two ladies. You, you should be writers. <laughs> that was great. Then the next comment is uh, by the winner of my giveaway from two weeks ago, Simply Fall, designs by Lisa, which includes the raven button and the piece of fabric. I used the random number generator and it picked Tara Benner. I just met Tara. Uh, more about that. Uh, she says, the thing I like most about fall is that the pool is closed and I can focus more on, st on stitching. <laughs> I just thought that was so funny. Why aren't you stitching at the pool? Do your pages blow away? Do people splash water on your stitching? Is the sun in your eyes? Anyway, I just, um, I can picture her stitching by the pool, but maybe she enjoys swimming too. So anyway, I thought that was a great answer. But last Friday, who should show up in my store but Tara and her husband, JB? Actually, I don't know if that's really his name. That's what he goes by on YouTube, but I don't know if JB is short for something or if it's really a nickname in his family. But I'm just going to call him JB because he's my buddy now. So they were on their way to vacation, and I was actually their first stop, so that was awesome. And Tara had a job ready for her husband. She had a list of hand-dyed silks that she wanted him to um, substitute hand-dyed cottons for. And so that was to keep him busy while she was shopping and while we were chatting. So he was a trooper, and I really appreciated meeting another supportive husband in this industry. I think it's so great when they put up with our hobby and appreciate it, um, make wonderful comments about it. Oh, honey, that's really pretty. <laughs> um, put up with the mess that we leave in the family room or just all the time that we spend stitching. So I just, uh, I thought it was great that he was so supportive and, and that we were part of their vacation plans. So, so congrats, Tara. Then for the giveaway this week, since so many of you said that fall was your favorite season, I'm gonna give the chart for autumn time, which is one of the Abbey Rose Designs models that we have in the trunk show. And of course, there's all four seasons. But this is uh, the chart. And then I'm also including a skein of the Classic Colorworks Red Current. And what I want you to do is tell me what your favorite red is to stitch with. So you can see on this chart, there's a lot of smaller areas, the flowers, the windows, um, the pumpkin stems that maybe don't require an over dyed to be used. So if you're looking at a chart and thinking that you don't wanna spend the money for 15 or 20 hand dyed colors for one project or maybe even your first project, I'm the first one that's going to help you determine which colors are most needed, which elements of your design would most benefit from using an overdyed. And I felt like the bricks just really needed the overdye to show off the texture um, of a real brick. And so that's why I included that color for you. So. Um, then I wanted to talk a little bit more about the show because there were several uh, comments that I wanted to address. So Nicole the Buckeye Stitcher said, I'm curious if anyone received a blue ribbon at the Needlework Show. And Sally at Tule Studios, am I saying that right, Sally? Um, she said, did they award the higher ribbons to larger, more intricate pieces? Yes, they did. So if you look at all of the pieces that were entered and then you separate it down to just the counted thread category 
And then you look at which pieces were just straight cross stitch and which pieces maybe had elements of pulled and drawn thread, harding, or other specialty stitches that were a little more interesting. I think it was kind of obvious that the blue ribbons were gonna go to either the more intricate pieces or the larger pieces that showed more work. I don't think there were enough pieces to highly divide this particular show into size categories. So in that respect, it kind of makes sense that the bigger ones were rewarded. But my friend Mary, who also helps out at the shop, was one of the winners of the Blue Ribbon. She also won Technical Excellence, so I thought I would show her piece. I know there was a picture in the photo montage from the show, but I wanted to show you a closer view of it. So here is Santa by Mirabilia. There's glass on it, so I know there's gonna be glare, but I'm hoping that you can get a good look at it. So it's a full coverage piece, plus there are beads on it, which made it a little more challenging. And so she should be very proud of the ribbons that she won. And I would just like to say again, we're adults. We don't all need participation ribbons, right? So it's all good the way it worked out. Uh, but then another comment, um, Linda Schindhelm said, um, some comments have the potential to make us better stitchers, but those same comments could also be discouraging and take away our enjoyment of the piece. If I am proud of my stitching and want to hang it in my house, I don't want to be reminded of my mistakes each time I look at it. I would not want to be a judge and I don't want to be judged. I think display only fairs would be lovely with only a People's Choice Award. And that reminded me that a long time ago, we had a club sponsored cross stitch show at our store where we gave away People's Choice and maybe some gift certificates to the shop. I don't remember exactly what we did, but I'm thinking it's time to do that again so that it is a show just for display and not for competition so that friends are not competing against each other and people that don't want to receive criticism on their hobby can participate and uh, the public can enjoy their work. It's time to do that again, so I'm thinking about that for 2020. And I will definitely do it at a time of year so that it doesn't conflict with the Medina show because we still want to support that one as well. And then another comment, I'm going to paraphrase this a little bit, from Kristen Ann. She says, I avoid putting my work into the fair because I'm a crazy perfectionist. And I worry that it would crush my soul to get bad comments about something I love. And she went on to say that she is one of those stitchers that would stitch each letter individually in a word. Remember, I said I, I wouldn't, wasn't going to do that, and I didn't care that the judges found some carried threads because that wasn't going to change the way I stitched. But I guess we all have a choice in how particular we want to be with our stitching. We have a similar mindset because we chose cross stitch as our hobby. We like the fact that it's straightforward. There are holes in the fabric for us. We can make perfect X's. But then again, we don't wanna be judged if our X's aren't perfect. So it's kind of a weird situation because most of us are or have perfectionist tendencies, but we may not wanna be called out on it. So, but it's, it's all good. Um, I haven't done much stitching lately. I was working on a couple pieces from my Stitch Mania, but it was a very busy summer and we had the three designers teaching classes. And then I've been sprucing up the shop, uh, getting ready for the tour next week. So I've been spending a lot of time at the shop. So I thought this was the perfect week to do a what's new in the way of cross stitch charts. So I have JBW that I'm gonna start with, kind of out of alphabetical order, but they're small and they're threatening to fall off the pile. So we'll start with those. A Scandinavian Christmas. Christmas tree collection 10. 
has two designs on it. They're shown two ways, over two or over one, so that you can get a smaller ornament if you do a smaller tabletop tree or even a wreath, or if you wanted to do it as a Christmas card. So, but if you like the trees, she's got other charts in that series. Then there's a new series called 12 Days of Christmas, and she actually put them out all at the same time. So we could get them done for this Christmas. There's book one, there's book two, book three, book four. All right, then from Artful Offerings, we have Hoot Owl Halloween. The blue flower has Halloween acorns and Halloween squirrel. So I think the only season she hasn't done yet is summer. I'm anxious to see whether she makes it patriotic or not. And who knows, maybe she'll do um, a Christmas version of both of those. That would be great. Hands-on Design has some new Christmas, Cranberry Christmas. I love the red ticking she used. And just so you're aware, we also carry the Sulky Threads if you're interested in trying something new. You use it just as it comes off the spool. It's the equivalent of two strands, so you don't have to divide it, anything. Then another hands-on is Jack-O-Lantern Junction Farm. Oops, let me show you all three projects there. And for different finishes, check out Priscilla's blog or um, Stitching with the Housewives because she's the original chalk artist. All right, Heart and Hand has the last one, the last season in the Whirly Gig series, winter. And the last three months of the Square Dance series. Heartstring Samplery has Acorn House Pin Drum, but it would also be very nice as a pillow or a small framed picture. Tea is for Turkey. I really can't decide which one is my favorite alphabet letter, but I think that's way up there. Homespun Elegance has some new trucks. Pumpkin Pickin' and Trick or Treat. Madame Chantilly has Celebrate Halloween. I love this one, and I also love Celebrate Christmas, but I don't have it yet because every time I order from the two distributors, it's out of stock, so I'll be excited to get that one in. The Plum Street Automatic came, so here is Autumn Hill. And the other day, I helped a customer change the face and the legs to a beautiful dull, prim, witchy green. So I think that'll look great. Bless Our Land. Clementine. And Goody Grimwood. She's right up there on the bird. Scissor Tail Designs has Joy to the World. And then we have a new designer that I'm excited about, Trellis and Time. So there's Autumn Town. Hello, Autumn Sampler. School Days Sampler. Spooky Sampler. Can't you see those as individual ornaments too? on a Halloween tree, or um, they look like they're full X's, so they'd be great on perforated paper. Spooky Town. And Trick or Treat. So I think I got through everything I wanted to talk about. We will see you next week, hopefully with the photo montage. And I wanted to say thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing and have a great week, everyone. Bye.